we have a slightly scary looking function over here. And the question is to develop that function in a Laurent series in the ring around the origin with radius one. So just pause the video and try and tackle this, uh, this problem. Now this function is not so scary as soon as you realize that this is actually the product of two functions of which you already know the series expansion. So let's do that. Let's write down this function more explicitly as an exponential with a known series expansion. And then if we just bring out a minus sign here, this is written as one over one minus Z of which we also know a series expansion. Um, specifically, if the magnitude of Z is smaller than one, we have a series expansion that, uh, that converges. So we would be tempted to write down that this is equal to minus product of two series expansions. The first one is the summation of m going from zero to uh, infinity of z to the power of m divided by m factorial. And then a second series expansion that we can write down again because the modulus of z is smaller than, than one. So we can write down a series expansion of m going from zero to infinity of just z to the power of m. Right, so uh, what I want you to do is consider what we've done here, see if everything's fine with you, uh, and just pause the video and, and think about this. We've done something dangerous here because we have two series expansions, one over here and one over there. Now, this series expansion here, and more specifically the summation index, has nothing to do with the summation index in that second series expansion. They're completely independent. They have nothing to do with each other. Now, if we now use the same symbol for both of these summation indices, that's really something that could cause a lot of trouble. So this is something we should not do. So just to emphasize the fact that this is a different summation index, let's use n here for that, uh, that second summation index. So that looks a lot safer. That emphasizes that these are really two different series expansions. And now what we want to do is we want to write this in a form which is a lot cleaner, where we collect all of the like powers of uh, z. So just try and evaluate the product of these two uh, series expansions. Basically, what we should do, of course, is do a substitution where k is equal to m plus n. Okay, taking that into account, pause the video and try and come up with an explicit expression for these, uh, these coefficients a sub k. In case you're not really familiar with how you should take the product of two series expansions, let's just take a step backwards and calculate a much simpler product of two mini series, let's call them. Let's have a1 plus a2 times b1 plus b2. Now, hopefully, this will not come as a surprise to you that you can write this as a1, b1, a1, b2, a2, b1, and a2, b2. So this will give rise to 2 times 2, 4 different terms. And each of these terms, of course, is important. We should not neglect one of those, uh, those terms. So what we could also do is represent this thing graphically if we have a diagram where, for example, on the horizontal axis, we have the summation index m and on the vertical axis, we have n. So we could represent these four different terms by four different dots. So let's say that this is one and this is two, one and two. So each of these four different dots corresponds to a certain term when we evaluate the product of these two mini series. So if we had, for example, three by three terms, we would have had nine terms. Now, what we're doing in this case is having a product of two real series expansions where both M and N are actually running from zero all the way towards infinity. So each of these terms can be represented by a dot in this diagram. In this case, we see that we have an infinite number, actually even a double infinite number of dots. And each one of these dots, of course, is important. And here you see what would have happened if you stuck to your guns and used the same variable for the two different summation indices that would correspond to only taking into account 
terms here on this diagonal where n would be equal to m. And now you can clearly see that this is really a wrong thing uh, to do. So in working out this product, it's important that we look at each of these terms and what can we do to make sure that we don't lose any term? Well, we could, for example, say, let's first of all, look at m equal to zero and then just have n vary from zero to infinity. And then we move to m equal to one, do the same thing and moving from zero to infinity. And by doing our bookkeeping that way, we will be sure that we do not lose any, any term here. But what we actually want to do is clean this thing up and collect all of the like powers of z. So basically, we're looking for all of the different values where k, namely m plus n, is equal to a given value. So let's just look where in this diagram do we find equal the same values of, uh, of k. So looking, for example, at k equal to 0, you see in this diagram that that occurs when both m and n are equal to 0. So over here, this, this dot here is k equal to 0. What are the terms that will give rise to z to the power of 1? Well, there's two different points in this diagram. We have m equal to 1 and n equal to 0, and the other way around. So we have these two guys over here giving rise to k equal to 1. And now you start to see the pattern emerging, right? So over here, we have the three different points that will give rise to k equal to 2. So a different way of making sure that we do not forget any of these dots in this diagram is first summing over different values of k. So starting out by k equal to 0 and then moving up all the way towards infinity. So let's say that k runs from 0 to infinity. And then for a given value of k, let's say we have the summation index m that we keep and we just get rid of n. So we have m running. Um, yeah, that's a good point to pause the video and think about the values, the limiting values for m here. So m runs from what to what value for a given value of k. So just pause the video. So previously, m and n were completely independent and they could both happily run from zero to infinity. Uh, but this time that's no longer the case because by introducing k here, we've sort of coupled m and n and also k all together. So now in this case, if we have a certain value of k, then m will run from, well, let's have a look, for example, at k equal to zero. In that case, m will run from zero to zero. So that's just one term. If we have over here, k is equal to one. Now in that case, we'll see that m goes from here, zero to one over there. So for k equal to one, m will run from zero to one. And for k equal to 2, m will run from 0 to 0, 1, 2. So you see in this diagram that more in general, for a given value of k, m will actually run from 0, sorry, not to infinity, from 0 to k. And that's how we should evaluate, uh, how we should do the bookkeeping to make sure that we don't forget any of these, uh, these terms. By the way, if you don't like this uh, diagram and you prefer to do stuff algebraically, there's also a different way to come up with this, uh, these limiting values for m. But it's uh, not so clear, I would say, compared to looking at this diagram. But still, just for fun, let's see if we can also derive these uh, limits in an algebraic way. So we know that we have m plus n now substituted as k. And we also know that both m and n are positive numbers. So m plus n are larger than or equal to zero. So we've decided to transform the product of the series expansion by only taking k and m into account and forgetting about the value n. Now let's just explicitly write down this n as a function of the other guys. So n is equal to k minus m. And we do know that n is a positive number. So we do know that n is larger than or equal to zero. And that immediately gives us again that m is limited to k over here. So this is another way of trying to come up with this uh, upper bound here. 
write. So basically now we have everything to explicitly write down the series expansion. It's just a matter of combining some terms and making sure we have the right summation indices and the right limits. So we will move from k0 to infinity. And then for each value of k, we have an m that will run from 0 to k, giving rise to a certain power z to the k. If we look back at what we had here, um, so obviously this z to the power of m plus n will be z to the power of k. And then we just have this 1 over m factorial that we have uh, everywhere. So here we have 1 over m factorial. So this gives us an explicit formula for the different terms having a certain power of z in this uh, summation over here.